Well, a huge announcement from NASA today. Their scientists believe water is flowing on the surface of Mars, and it's believed to be salt water, which could still theoretically sustain life. NASA says striking new images from the mountains of Mars may be their best evidence yet of flowing liquid water. Those images appear to show some sort of water flow on the Mars surface. Now, if true, NASA says this has profound implications in the search for extraterrestrial life. But today's NASA announcement is nothing new for a Winsboro man. Charles Schultz has been studying the so-called red planet for years, and back in April, he told News 19 viewers that there's microbial life and water on Mars. He believes NASA has known this for years and is releasing the information a little at a time. You came to the conclusion that there was water and life on Mars when? The date when I was first certain of it was February 15th, 2004. Charles Schultz looks and sounds like a modern-day Einstein. Using the Freedom of Information Act, he obtained more than 200,000 Mars images from NASA. And after thousands of hours of research, he came to some startling conclusions. Many of the things that I've seen look very clearly like the recent erosion or presence of water, liquid water on the surface. And many of the images show what appear to be fossil organisms, marine fossils. Right now, the planet has extremely thin air, very tough living conditions, but it is wet on the surface in many areas, and it is covered with fossil remains from marine organisms. Some of the fossils we found are seashells, and very clearly they are identical to the things we'd find on the Earth. This is a conch shell, apparently, found on the planet Mars, and this is one on the Earth, and you can see there's an absolute identical appearance to both of them. Schultz showed me picture after picture. This is a trilobite fossil. All NASA images. Opportunity, the rover found on the 158th day of its imaging. And all of them compelling. This clearly looks like water flow to me and mud. It is. The rover, the opportunity, these Mars crafts that have gone up there and literally have gotten stuck. Stuck in the mud? In many cases, yes. NASA Director Charlie Bolden won't speculate on the potential for water or fossils on Mars, but he's hoping the next rover mission, Curiosity, will answer those questions once and for all.
My job there was to examine pictures as they were coming in of the surface of Mars in regions that we thought would be safe for the spacecraft to land. There was a small group of people who felt that this was an example of an alien construction that there was life on Mars or there had been life on Mars. Very interestingly enough, NASA first took an image of the face on Mars and they labeled it head and uh, this this photograph was quickly dismissed by NASA as a trick of light and shadow. It's not really a face on Mars, it's just a lighting angle difference. Wrong answer. Here we have a face in pyramids on Mars, a sphinx in pyramids in Egypt. There has to be a connection, a Mars-Earth connection. Are these merely strange optical illusions? Or are they the key to understanding the real truth about a connection between Earth and Mars? Surely it's possible that mere coincidence could account for this seemingly mysterious connection. But what was needed was some sort of scientific proof. Here in southwest England, the man-made mountain of Silbury Hill has loomed over the horizon since time immemorial. Nearby is Avebury, another megalithic monument believed to be thousands of years old with an eroding earthen wall preserving an inner circle of partially preserved ancient standing stones. The area also contains an amazing connection to the structures at Sidonia. The connection here was determined not by simple observation or even supposition, but was founded on the plain facts of geometry. The question was, what if these ancient monuments in England corresponded in size, shape, and dimension to a set of geometric features on a plain called Sidonia. What if Avebury Circle in England was in fact intended to represent, to be an analog of the crater at Sidonia, and Silbury Hill, a few miles to the south, came to represent the Tholus at Sidonia on Mars? The angles and positions of these ancient features, including where the cliff would be, where the tetrahedral pyramid seems to lie, and this specific angle interconnecting them both, the infamous 19.5, all seem to match. You said that, that Egyptian civilization looks as if it just appeared out of nowhere. from a legacy of somewhere yeah. else. Out of, out of nowhere, just, just well, out of the blue. Suddenly, one minute they're making relatively humble, simple structures, and the next minute they're building something like the Great Pyramid. Well, this gets into the fact that um, the capital city of Egypt, of course, is Cairo. And what does the word Cairo mean? Well, that means Mars. Right. <laughs> it means Mars. Um, so now as we go into that, people who might have been with you up until this point, now we've gone even further into yeah. the fringe. But my, what, what is, you, what is work, your feeling uh, of connection between my, Mars and... My work, my work all the way along the line has been work of synthesis, uh, bringing together uh, the research of many, many people who work in this field. And yeah. uh, I, was, I was absolutely intrigued by uh, Richard Ho Hoagland's work. Uh, on Mars hmm. uh, and on the monuments of Mars and um, and I felt that it was worth uh, a, a considering that seriously and uh, the, the book The Mars Mystery which again Robert and I uh, wrote together uh, does does look at this now we we are not um, we are not necessarily advocating an extraterrestrial origin um, mm -hmm. to ancient Egypt we're saying that something interesting is going on let's look at let's look at all the evidence um, and uh, my side of the Mars mystery was to look was to look primarily um, at uh, the evidence for cataclysms in the solar system it seems that the planet Mars possibly quite recently uh, was hit by a devastating cataclysm something ripped off half of the crust of Mars and just lost it I mean something ca absolutely catastrophic happened yeah. there. Um, and um, uh, it's quite possible that something equally catastrophic could happen to our planet when you look into the issue of near-Earth asteroids and long-period comets whizzing around the solar system at vast speeds. And people may not understand that um, there are some undeniably strange, gigantic structures on the surface of Mars. Yes. There's the, what they call the DNM pyramid for Vincent de Pretro and Greg Molinar. And it's a five-sided pyramid, very clear, unambiguous, absolutely a pyramidal yeah. shape in yeah. a pentagon kind of formation. I was very impressed by the DM, DNM pyramid, very impressed by the work that, uh, that Richard Hoagland and others have done on that structure and on yeah. the whole Sidonia setup. Very impressed by the face on Mars. Now we all know that NASA came out with photographs which made the face on Mars look like, what was it they said? A, a cat a, box. A, a cat box. Um, but uh, 
I don't. I have to say, I, I, and I don't think I'm alone in this. I just don't totally trust uh, everything that NASA say and do. Well, there's uh, lots of pictures where you see a really nice plateau, and it's just shaped all the way around, and then the face is sitting on top of it, and it's got two eyes, a nose, a mouth. Exactly. It's all symmetrical. Exactly. I think we were the subject of a disinformation campaign at that point. For some reason, the powers that be uh, seem to want us not to think that there may be uh, artifacts. Uh, Human face too. And it's a human face. Well, I know. <laughs> it's extremely, it's extremely intriguing, extremely interesting, and very, very hard to explain. First of all, we have to fight our way through the through the vast mass of disinformation that has been generated on this subject, and maintain our curiosity at least yeah. for what on earth was going on 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 Mars, and and uh, uh, what the origin of those uh, of those structures. Uh, might might be and why they contain uh, huge amounts of recognizable geometry, uh, some of which is found in monuments on on Earth as well.